guys, welcome back to my channel. I am sitting here looking at a lot of new makeup to me. Some of these products are new to the market. Some of them are just new to me. A couple of them I have not even tried yet. This was gonna be like a very preliminary first impression. And when I do those, I always put down in the description box how I felt like it wore throughout the day, what my impression of it was once I gave it a full day's test, sometimes even a couple of days, depending on how ahead of time I can film the video. So we're about to jump on in. The first thing I'm going to do though is start off with perfume because I haven't sprayed any today and Dossier sent me another perfume. And this one, the last one I talked about from Dossier was a dupe for a perfume that I don't have in my collection that I've smelled lots, but I don't personally have it. This one is one that I do have and it is Oriental Cherry. So it is supposed to be reminiscent of Lost Cherry from Tom Ford. Talked about Dossier before. They are a dupe house. So basically it has lots and lots and lots. I don't even know how many they have. A lot of fragrances that are impressions of higher end luxury fragrances that can be very expensive. I think if we are a fragrance lover, we all know how expensive they can be, but Dossier is $29. So a couple of people talked about, uh, made comments on my last video where I talked about Dossier that they have tried it before and that it just doesn't last long on them. I'm not going to say that this is the longest lasting perfume that I have in my collection because it's not, but it does last longer than 10 minutes. I had a couple people say that. Um, I get a good solid probably three to four hours out of the scent before I have to reapply. But again, we're talking $29 versus like $450, which I believe is the, the biggest size, maybe even $800. I don't know if Lost Cherry comes in that huge size or not, but I know that it's like upwards of $400 for the um, 3.4 ounce. So if I have to respray a few times, that, I mean, I'm okay with that. So the top notes of this are cherry, almond, and cinnamon. Middle notes, cloves, rose, jasmine, and plum. And the base notes, Peru balsam, tonka bean, and vanilla. So when I first spray this, I get lost cherry. I was going to say if there's any difference, but it's very, very hard to find a difference to me, to my nose upon first spray to Tom Ford Lost Cherry. So I know that is a big hit. I mean, I love my original too, but they're expensive. So if you have been wanting that, and you just can't bite the bullet on the price tag. Um, Oriental Cherry is very, very, very similar for $29. So I will have that linked down in the description box. And I also have a discount code as well. It's not an affiliate code. It just helps y'all. Okay, let's jump into the makeup. I have... Goodness, I have quite a few new things. I placed a very large beauty pie order. And when I say very large, what I mean is I got a lot of products. The price for the amount of products that I got was not that much at all because it's beauty pie. Everything is so incredibly affordable. I have had so many people ask me if I've tried the Super Luminous Under Eye Genius Corrector. So I made sure to put that in this past order. Now I got the shade Medium Deep. Now I'm gonna tell you the reason I got that is because I have this strong aversion on myself, not necessarily with everybody else, but on myself, with super bright under eyes. I just don't think it's flattering on me at all. And when I saw the pictures of the medium deep, I felt like it was still gonna work. It's got that peachy undertone. Now I know a lot of these, a lot of people are comparing this to the Becca under eye brightener, which I have in the original. So I think the next time I order from Beauty Pie, I'm going to get the lighter shade in this so that I can do an actual comparison of the shades. But I think I like this one formula wise even more than I like the Becca. It's not as thick and almost like putty feeling, but it gives really good coverage. I'm sure you've been able to see, I have, I got the Opus Plasma treatment, the eye treatment last week, and I still have a little bit of some healing going on right here. So I definitely want that to be covered up and this one does the trick. So I'm just gonna take my Fit Glow Correct and Conceal Brush, tap that in just a couple of times, you don't need really more than that, and press it into my under eye. I mean, you need very little product. It definitely helps with the darkness. Yes, this is a darker color on me, but the, my concealer covers it up. 
and I'm really looking for just something to get rid of the darkness and wear well. So I'm using a new concealer today, so I'll have to see how it wears on top of this, but I have worn this probably four or five times before I'm filming this video. And it's worked great under the concealers that I have tried it with so far. Now, this area is really healing, so I don't know that anything's going to cover that completely. I'm okay with it. I like the amount of coverage that I'm getting with that product. And I like the way it feels. It's super lightweight because you need such a small amount. Now, let's jump into foundation. This is one of the ones that I have not tried yet. I got this off of QVC. I think right now it's exclusive to QVC. I'll have to see if I can find it anywhere else, but this is the Chart Shape Tape Cloud Coverage Broad Spectrum SPF 15 Foundation. It says it's medium buildable coverage, a natural finish that looks like skin. Cloud 9 Complex. Blend of hyaluronic acid, squalane, snow mushroom, avocado, prickly pear, aloe, licorice, vitamin E, and castor oil. Bouncy cloud-like texture that smooths and blurs, and the SPF 15 is mineral. Like a lot of foundation products that come at QVC, it actually came with a brush as well. And this is the Shape Tape Airlift brush. So you can see it kind of comes up to a point and it is a dense kabuki-like brush. So I got the shade Light Medium Sand. It is in a pump package and I'm just gonna take two pumps to start. It is a little bit of a thicker consistency. See how it's kind of forming peaks? It's definitely not running down my hand by any means. I think this is going to be a good shade for me. And then I'm just gonna stipple it in with the, this brush. I don't know if that's what I would call medium coverage, but let's do this other side and see if I can build it up. It is definitely thicker. I don't know that I love the brush. I have on my um, Supergoop matte screen sunscreen today because I didn't want anything to appear to be like too luminous. I really wanted to get the true finish of this foundation. So that is with two pumps for the entire face. I haven't even done my neck yet. I can still see some redness. I didn't love the brush, it, there's nothing wrong with it, but it wasn't my favorite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another pump to see if I can build up coverage with a brush that I know I love. This is the It Cosmetics number 115. And I'm just gonna put it where my redness is. And I'm just gonna stipple that in. Okay, so that definitely gave more coverage when I used that brush and stippled it. And I, it almost makes me feel like I would have gotten a little bit more coverage if I would have used the brush to begin with, this brush in particular. Maybe not though. So let's do a little bit of a close up. This is, honestly, when it's all said and done for my neck and face, I use four pumps, which I feel like is quite a bit of product. Um, even on the areas where I did not build it up, like in between my brows and on my forehead. I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell. I feel like it looks a little cakey. I'll have to see how that kind of melts into the skin as we go along with the makeup, but right now it's not my absolute favorite. It's not my least favorite that I've ever tried, but it's not my absolute, upon first impression. The first impressions are not always accurate. Let's move on to concealer. I got the Armani Luminous Silk Concealer. I have never tried this before. I got it in the shade 4.5. Okay, I just ran into my bathroom to get my sponge wet because I had forgotten to do that. And when I looked in the bathroom mirror, I'm like, I said, this is a good color. It actually looks pretty yellow on me. So we'll see if that kind of dials down as we do the rest of the makeup too. So this is the shade 4.5. Again, I have never used this concealer before. I love the Luminous Silk Foundation. So we shall see. I actually got a kind of repurchase on that because my other one was just expired. Like it was time to lay that one to rest. So I got a new one, which I'm excited about, but I really like the shade. I'm glad I picked this shade. It's perfect for what I look for in a concealer. Blended out really well. I would not say this is full coverage. I would say it is a medium coverage at best. That's okay though. It feels super lightweight blended out really well. I will, again, put notes on how I felt like it wore throughout the day. But if you have this concealer, let me know your thoughts. 
Okay, for powder, I am gonna use a new powder that I got from Beauty Pie. This is the One Powder Wonder Matte Perfecting Powder. And this is a pressed version. Now, my first foray into beauty powder, beauty pie powders, was the loose translucent ver version, which I absolutely love. I've talked about that quite a bit since I have purchased it. But I wanted to get a pressed version and see what that was like. So I've used this again like four or five times since I've had it, and I really enjoy how it wears. It keeps your makeup mattified and on all day long, all day long. And I feel like even though I haven't used it to touch up because I haven't needed to when I use this powder, I feel like it would also be a good touch up powder. So I'm going to use my La Mer powder brush and just lightly, I don't want to do a ton because I feel like this um, foundation is already pretty matte on its own. And then for bronzer, another Beauty Pie product. I think this is the last Beauty Pie product I'm going to talk about, but this is the... Quantum Bronzer in Goldilux. I don't think... Okay, so I have a face palette from them that I have a bronzer in that I really like, but I have not tried any of these individual bronzers. So I wanted to give this a go. Again, it's in the shade Goldilux. It is a matte bronzer. I'm going to use this BH Cosmetics like blush brush that I have really been liking for bronzer lately to apply that kind of stamp it where I want it. I really like this color. I think the color is very good for what I look for in a bronzer. And it's really good, especially for a matte bronzer. Sometimes, like not today, but sometimes when I wear like a luminous foundation or maybe a luminous powder or something like that, I don't want more luminous powder products on top of it because then I just feel like I start looking greasy. So I like to use matte bronzers to even it out. And as far as bronzers go in general, but especially matte bronzers, I've really been enjoying this. I don't have a new highlight, but one of my newest highlights that I really love is the Chantecaille Pearl Lumiere Holiday Highlight. I just love this one so much. Talked about it a lot. I probably should have used a cream highlight with this super matte look, but oh well done now and the bronzer looks harsh in the viewfinder it is not like that in real life but we are going to buff it out after we apply blush what blush did i choose i don't have a new blush so i'm just going to use my glow skin beauty blush in soleil because i need something with a little bit of sheen to it for this matte face that we've got going on and then we are going to buff with our glass radiant light and I'm really going to pay a lot of attention to this bronzer line down here so it can come across across a little less harsh on camera and then instead of using a setting spray I'm going to use a hydration spray because again I just feel like my skin kind of needs it right now and I'm just going to use my Chantecaille rose water which is one of my favorites and I'm going to douse my face in it just kind of brings the skin back to life. Now we are going to move on to eyes, but I feel like I need something on these lips. I wore this in my last video. Y'all, I got one of these during the VIB sale and it's in a really pretty like pale pink color, which would absolutely not go with the eye look that, or my sweater that I'm going with today. But I repurchased it during the Armani Black Friday sale in another color. And this is the Lip Power lipsticks. I know they've been talked about a lot lately. I uh, This is the shade 102. Romanza, I think, is the name of it. I'll put, I'll link the other shade that I have, the pink shade that I bought first, but this is just a really pretty nude lip. And it's moisturizing. It's balmy. It's so, so, so nice. I really, really, really like these. All right, now I feel like we can go on to the eyes. I'm gonna use a couple of products that aren't new, but they are new to me. I got them in the Victoria Beckham's 20% off sale. And then I got this one in the Cult Beauty Black Friday sale. The Victoria Beckham items are the Lid Luster in Honey and the Smoky Eye Brick in Tweed. So this is the one that's got that really pretty purple and um, like orangey terracotta brick color, which is my favorite color 
in the entire palette. And then this I got from Cult Beauty because I really wanted to try out some Vive makeup products. And if you aren't familiar, um, Jamie Genevieve on YouTube started a makeup brand called Vive. And I got two of the eyeshadow palettes. I didn't get anything else. I wanted to start out kind of slow. <laughs> and this is the original essential palette. So this is the more warm toned palette. There's also a Muse that I got that has the more cool tones, purples and pinky type of shades in it. But we're going to be working out of this one, I believe today as well. So what am I going to do? I think the first thing I'm going to do is start out in the smoky eye brick with this larger brown shade. It's just a really nice mid-tone brown. And I'm gonna use that starting out in my crease with my refer number 15 brush. And I'm putting very, very, very light pressure on this brush. You see I'm holding it in the very end and I'm really just gently gliding it on the eye. That shows how much pigment these shadows have. I've heard a couple of other people talk about theirs not having as much pigment. I think they had a different color, like they didn't, they weren't working out of this tweed shade, but I have no issues with the pigment in this palette. I really like it. In fact, again, it's so pigmented that sometimes I feel like I need to go extra light with it so that I don't get too much color on right at first. Then I'm going to go into this color Chow right here because I feel like it matches the sweater. I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that mustardy warmth. I'm using a refer number one brush. And what I'm doing is I'm taking it on its side, like I'm taking it on its side and I'm going just a little bit above that brown shade and blending them together. So, and then I just kind of use my finger to blend it out. So it's very, very subtle, but you get that kind of yellow tone coming through without just putting a straight yellow on the eye. The Vive palettes, um, from what I have used so far, I really enjoy the mattes, uh, the shimmers. I haven't used all the shimmers, like these two really super shimmery ones up top I haven't used yet. But like this glimmer, I'm probably going to use that in the inner corner. It's not my favorite shimmer formula. Um, I feel like it could be a little bit more opaque and a little bit less dusty, but I'm still trying to work with them. I'm going to go back into tweed and I have to use my favorite color of the bunch. This is called rust and I'm using that on my refer 26 brush, which is a really nice pointy brush, which I like to use on the outer corner. And I'm going to kind of follow my lash line and then connect it up into the crease. Just give that really pretty color on the outer corner of the eye. The mirrors in these compacts are so good. They're really small because it's a very, I mean, it's a very small compact. But man, it's a good mirror. I would be more than fine leaving it like this because I love an all matte look. But I did want to use the Lid Luster in Honey. Now, they've since come out with two new colors. And I think I'm going to get Chiffon because it's a very pretty champagne shade. But this is a gold bronzy shade. And it is so incredibly pretty. Now, I have a lot of these type of shimmery pot eyeshadows, right? I've got the Hourglass. I've got Tarte has made some in the past. There's another brand that I have a lot of too. I'm not going to say this particular formula like stands out above any of the others, but I am going to say it's very, very pretty. It's not chunky. It's buildable. Like I can just put a little wash or I can go back and continue to build it up. You can definitely use a brush, but I like to use my fingers with formulas like this. It's just a very pretty shimmer shade. And then I'm gonna go into this glimmer shade right here and use that in my inner corner. This is a very yellow gold. And again, these aren't bad. I think you can see that's really pretty. I just like the mattes better. And that's very normal for me when a palette has both matte and shimmer. I'm going to put a little bit of belt on my brow bone. I feel like I prefer one of the formulas over the other. And it's not to say I don't like the lesser of my favorite. It's just I tend to have preferences. I feel like we all kind of do. 
And for underneath, I'm going to smoke out, I'm going to mix this rust shade and the caramel shade that I used in my crease on my Wayne Gossamer 19. I'm just going to smoke that underneath the eye. And then I'm going to use a little bit of a pencil eyeliner. So the founder of Urban Decay Cosmetics is actually starting her own line called Cali Ray, and they sent over some of their first products. So I have their Surf Proof Easy Glider Eye Definer Pencils. I have three shades that I'll swatch for you. There is Night Diving, which is black. There is The Deep with like five E's which is this really pretty kind of teal blue green shade. I'll do a close up in a minute. And then the one I'm using today is called Secret Spot, which is a really pretty brown shade. So these are very similar, I feel like, to the Urban Decay Glide On eye pencils. As far as how they apply, they last all day long. Like I really had to even scrub and get swatches off my hands. So that's the black the teal green and the brown. So they definitely aren't going anywhere. I really want to do a like an all over smudgy smoky eye with that teal color. It's, I'm getting a lot of inspiration from that. It's absolutely beautiful, but the formula is great on this. Very easy to use because they do just glide on and I'm just going to try to keep it pretty close to the lash line. And then they also sent me the Cali Ray Clean Mascara. This is Zero Smudge Volumizing Curling Ultra Volumizing Mascara. This is a tubing mascara. So it stays on all day. It needs warm water to be removed. But once you do that, it does easily remove off of the eyes. I have not tried this yet. So let me get my lashes ready. I'm going to use all my normal lower lash mascara and primers and curl them and then we'll try the mascara on together. Okay, so this eye is primed and ready. Really pretty. Let me show you this really pretty packaging. Look, it's giving me summer vibes with this pink and purple teal ombre thing they've got going. Really, really pretty. The brush is pretty basic. No bells or whistles, which I honestly appreciate in a mascara. And I can tell just by pulling the brush out one time that it's a pretty wet formula. So let's see how this works. Okay, that is one coat, the Cali Ray mascara. I feel like gives incredible length. Not quite sure about volume yet, but I'm gonna put two coats on both eyes and we'll see. Okay, here are two coats. Now, I don't think it gave a ton of volume, but the length is pretty incredible. And I work with one eye at a time typically, so I will put like one coat over here and then I'll go over here, put another coat, and then I'll come back and put the second coat. What I noticed was by the time I came back to put the second coat, even though it's a super wet formula, it dries very fast. And it wasn't the easiest to build up the second coat. So what I'm gonna do is tomorrow I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna go two coats like back to back while it's still wet and I'm able to build it better. And I'll put notes on that as well. But the length is really, really nice. And I look forward to seeing how it wears since it is a tubing mascara. Overall, I'm very happy with this look. I feel like the more the foundation sets in, especially after I spray with that Chantecaille powder, it looks better for sure. All the notes will be down in the description box. I really like this eye look. Like I really, like this palette <laughs> a lot. And I really like, like I said, the, the Vive palette as well. It's a pretty color story and I'll do some more looks, especially on Instagram, if you wanna see those with um, that palette and also the Muse palette. But if you wanna see it on here, let me know as well. Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll have everything listed and linked down below. I do use affiliate links and I appreciate all of your support when using those. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, safe, and sane, and that most of all, you go out and have a very blessed day.